morning meetings, man. Everyone's all pumped up. Everyone's all happy on the same page, same positive vibes, man. I love it, man. That's right. Um, so my toughest day, you know, I've been a homeboy for nine years now, and I'm never in my wildest dreams when I walked through those doors nine years ago that I would ever think where I'm at, where I'm at today in my life. That's right, give him Thank you. Um, <laughs> you know, when I first got here, you know, I was in a rehab. And my son was born, and I was in a rehab, and it was, it was um. You know, I wasn't ready. It was a behavior modification program. I could program. I could program, you know, get to the yard and homie say, you know, this cracking program, don't you know I mean? It's easy to program. But it was, um, you know, I, I wasn't ready and I was still using over there. I was using um, using um, heroin while I was in there. And I came to the homeboys and, you know, I was kind of still getting loaded when I was here, man. I remember Emily and Fabian used to chase me around, trying to, trying to give me the test all the time. And, and um, I will always hear, you know, people saying, hey, do the work, do the work. And um, what, what that looked like is, you know, we're working on ourselves, you know, and this is the hardest, hardest job we will ever have. Because we, we have carried so much in our whole life where we have we've just gotten used to it and we've adapted to it and we, we, we just made it a part of us, but it doesn't have to be a part of us. Um, I remember um, going back to another rehab, and when, you know, I was blessed that always he sent me back to rehab about eight years ago. And, um, it was called Fred Brown. And this rehab, there was 12 of us. And we had to do the work, right? We had to write our, write our, our story out. And a counselor named Jim, man, he was good, man. And um, he gave us writing assignments, right? And we had to write to our parents individually as a little kid, as a five-year-old kid. And what I mean by writing is not talking about when I was five years old, I had to put myself in the mind of myself as a five-year-old. And I know I wrote to my mom. And I had to write the response as well to my mom and my dad. And the hardest part was when um, I had to write a goodbye letter to my mom. Because you know my mom passed away in 2008, two days after I was old. And um, I had to write a goodbye letter to my mom. And I remember, I remember uh, that time in Jim, hey Jim, I'm not going to be able to do this. Because why not? Because now it's going to hurt me too much. It's going to hit hard. You know what I mean? And he said, well, that's why you're going to do it. You have to do it. Put in the work. Whatever you put in is what you're going to get out of it. And I was like, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to do it. He goes, well, pack your bags and leave. And I was like, what the hell? I go, I'm good. I'm clean. I'm doing real good right now. Don't do this. And he goes, pack your bags and leave if you're not going to like that letter. And I remember, I, 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 fine, I'm gone then. I kind of cussed him out a little bit. I was mad and I walked away and I was ready for him to come chase me. And he did it. <laughs> <laughs> so I go to my room and I pack my bags and I'm ready to roll. And I'm waiting for him to come and talk to me and he does it. So I went back to his office and he's right there, just reading the paper and I'm like, Jim, I'm gone, ain't it? He's like, all right then. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I was like, put my bag on the gym, like, don't make me write this letter because you have to. And I wrote that goodbye letter to my mom. And, uh, and I wrote the response. That was the beginning of my journey, really, really, really doing the work, you know, and uh, I finished the rehab, I came back to Homeboys, I started my journey, educational journey, my personal journey. And what that looked like was, um, I heard at Homeboys was, you know, I found myself going into depressions. The more I succeeded, the more I, I, I would like doubt myself and I would be down and I would, because I thought I didn't deserve it. Because I heard so much people in my life, I heard so much people, I destroyed families, and that's my truth. And, um, I have to understand why I became that person. How come I became so violent and so hateful? And I went back down, I went down in my childhood. And I would strap myself in, go into my mind as a kid, and relive from, relive everything I went through, the violence, the molestation, everything. And until I was ready to do that and heal from it, I was going to keep making the same mistakes. I was going to keep putting the needle mark. I was going to keep being in violent relationships. And I was going to keep going, going back to the joint, to the county jail. And it was so dangerous because I was institutionalized. I did not mind when the handcuffs were on me. I didn't even stress. I didn't trip on it. I, I did not mind being incarcerated. I had fun in there. That's how much my work, my mind was at the time. But 
you know, I went back and I was able to hold myself as a five-year-old kid and um, told myself and know that I was going to get over it. And by doing this and doing the work, I was going to help others change their lives as well. Take advantage of your time at home ministries and do the work. Thank you. Very much.